I, I don't know, Tom, if you agree or not, but one and nineteen, they're actually more relevant at one and nineteen than they were at forty one and forty one. They're certainly, I guess, in the news more in the national news. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> between the Kobe, uh, you know, the whole Kobe thing Tuesday night, and all the national media here, and then you know, announcing Okafor's suspension in New York when you know there was a ton of media there too, just the New York people, and all the uh, you know with the video and the, uh, all the responses and uh, reactions and the lack of uh, anybody but Brett Brown from you know the, the, the management front office speaking. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, let me start with the Okafor stuff then. And, and, you know, I felt bad for Brett Brown. You guys, like the firing squad, <laughs> lined up with this poor guy for 10 minutes last night. He's got to be the front man for all this. I, I don't, I assume, I think I heard Hanky was there last night. How does Hanky not step in and take the, the shots for, for Brown last night? I don't understand. I mean, you know, when he agreed to be the coach, he knew it was going to take a while. Obviously, he didn't think he'd be one in nineteen in year, you know, in year three. But here he is. Anytime anything happens, unless it's uh, at the draft lottery, the draft, uh, media day, uh, or the trade deadline, maybe one other time during the year. That's the only time Sam Hickey talks. So, you know, he knew he's a big boy. He can handle himself. But obviously, he'd rather not be. You know, he'd rather be talking about something else. But I mean, it's it's a big deal when you know. Uh, Certainly, your, your your franchise player that's healthy, given it, given the uncertainty of Embiid. Um, you know, when your franchise player, uh, your number three pick, is uh, you know, I guess to suspend him for two games, and there's you know all all the things that have been going on with him, and uh, and all the losing, and uh, you know, he's he's handled it really well. Um, I give him a lot of credit, I and mean, he didn't he didn't sign up to do it, but. He's the face of the franchise. He speaks to the franchise on a daily basis, and a lot. And usually, he's the only one speaking to the franchise. Yeah, and you know, I thought Brown did a good job. Uh, you know, for what they asked him to do to go out there and have to answer questions, and I thought he was up front. He explained, "Look, the, the kid told me something. And he wasn't a hundred percent truthful." Do you think two games for Jaleel Okafor was fair? Uh, would you? Do you think there should have been more of a penalty? Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. The first video, eh, you're a 19-year-old kid, you know, okay, a couple games I thought should have been. The second video, Tom, that guy's beat up pretty good. Uh, he's He's got a, some blood pouring out of his face there. I, I think Jalil could be in some trouble with that one. Well, yeah, and the first one, you know, before I guess when he told Brett Brown last Thursday when they were going to Houston, you know, he said it was, you know, he was kind of like provoked and it made it sound like he was – not exactly the victim, but, you know, sort of they, they went after him a little bit. The second one, he was right in the car. He could have left, and he, you know, uh, avoided somebody trying to hold him back and ran across the street or to the middle of the street to confront this guy. So that sort of doesn't wash, you know, on the, on the, you know, on the second one. You know, I, I don't – I really hadn't thought of it. I, I guess uh, probably two or three games now – don't forget, the NBA hasn't done anything. So the NBA, if the NBA deems that not enough, the NBA could suspend him too. The NBA is within its rights to do that. And you almost wonder if, I mean, if the timing was a little weird at like 5.15 on a, on a Wednesday night, you know, Wednesday late afternoon, that they would do it when they had seen the video that morning. You almost wonder if the, if the league said, you know, you better do something here because if you don't, we're going to come down, and you're probably not going to be happy with what we do. So, kind of hmm. like a preemptive strike. But I, I don't know that. I'm just surmising. But you know, the league is not. I mean, the league finds you if you plead no contest, DUI or something like that. The league suspends you, so they don't mess around. So, you know, and you know, who knows if there are more videos or, or other things out there? You, you just don't know, and you know, in this day and age. Um, so, I don't know, but I certainly needed to be suspended you could argue you know three games four games whatever i i don't know but you know you hope that uh you know there's some changes made tom moore with us here phillyburbs.com of course uh calkins media covering the sixers um they'll be off till saturday they play the nuggets on saturday afternoon at the uh, center uh no okafor he will be suspended in that game in your short dealings with jolly Ol, you, you know, the league has changed so much. You're around these young kids all the time. I mean, the whole roster is filled with them. Uh, it, it seems like the feedback has all been that this is a good kid. This is a 
um, you know, this instance is not who he really is, but a couple of things have compounded all in one week, Tom. Um, what what kind of kid, what kind of vibe do you get from Okafor since he's been here? You know, he seems, you know he's 19, you know, he, he, he's a little immature, and, you know, which is not surprising, and sometimes he gets a little bored. He's not, you know, the, the most thrilled to talk to us, you know, after games or whatever, but I haven't seen anything – um, that would indicate anything like this, but you know we, we see a, it's a very controlled environment. You know, he PR talks to him and you know the players and sort of coach him up and tell him what to say and suggest and things like that. So you don't really know people, I guess, until you see them, you know, away from uh, away from there. And you know, you have a couple of drinks and you have some money and you're losing. Uh, Okafor has only lost thirteen had only lost thirteen games in his three. In his three previous NBA seasons, uh, three previous seasons, he won a state title in Illinois his senior year there, and then he won an NCAA title, you know, with Duke. So he is not used to losing, and you have a lot of free time. And you, the Sixers change their policy; they used to fly on to the next city after the game, but because of this whole sports science and try to trying to ensure that people sleep, get the proper rest, they're staying. But clearly, people, if they're out at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm pretty sure they're not getting proper rest. So maybe that's something that they could uh, reconsider, too. Um, what is your thoughts three years now? Brett said something yesterday that you know stands out to me. He said, we've been here three years. We've never had anybody get in trouble. We've never had this. Some people would say, well, you had Embiid kind of... Uh, I don't know, disobey, I guess is a word you could use with this group of kids. Uh, they disobeyed his. Uh, there were some reports that Noel has been fined numerous times for being late. So while they haven't had uh, police blotter type of stuff, you know, do you think that this organization is sturdy, set up well for the environment of, of young players they have? Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, the. With having so many young players and losing uh, for su- such a period of time, I really think um, certainly the presence of a, at least one veteran who plays. I mean, the only guy beyond his fourth year is Carl Landry, and he's recovering from wrist surgery. He hasn't played yet, so I don't know how much cachet he has among his teammates because I don't know how many of them really know him or know what he does, did, you know, how he contributed in Houston, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, um you know, I don't think clearly this was the plan. I, I do think the Sixers, though, are very reactive and not proactive in things. I really think they could. Um, they don't get ahead of things. They 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 kind of wait till they happen, and and then they have they sort of have to do something. Um, I think they certainly could make you know could make some changes, and I'd like to see a, at least one veteran who plays in here to help, because if all you're hearing it from is the coach. Um, you get tired of that. You need somebody else. Last year they had Bob Mute and Jason Richardson, who, you know, Brett Brown showed them a, a film of Jason Richardson's highlights to show that the guy won a dunk contest a couple times. He was a 24 point scorer for numer- you know, numerous seasons to, 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 to give him some cachet so they know this guy played and this guy was very good in this league. So they, they respect and maybe understand that he went through these things. And they, you know, they they would be maybe more likely to listen to him. Tom, did they do they not have veterans on this team? A because they wanted to lose. B because, as many agents have said in reports, free agents don't want to come here. Uh, C they just couldn't get someone to sign here. Well, I mean, here, here's an example. They, you know, they made that trade with Sacramento. They had Jason Thompson here. And we were told that they were going to keep him. Three weeks later, they trade him. You know, he's he's still in his 20s. He's a you know a decent four and five who was was a starter in this league uh, for most of his seven years. He's a lottery pick. Um, he's a good guy. Um, I, you know, they had him right here, and they used him in you know to make another to make another move. And I'm not talking about a star. I mean, I'm talking about. Like Carter Williams in his year and a half here, he never had a veteran point guard. I just think day to day, just to show him what you need to do, help you know in practice, work ethic, uh, problems that come up, situation you know that that, that he can kind of rely on. And I, I, I don't, I mean, I understand you're, you know you're not going to sign a you know five year seventy million dollar guy because they're not going to come here unless you way overpay you know for somebody. Um, 
But I, I just think one way or the other, you need to have, I mean, they, they said they want to use all 15 roster spots, but, I mean, it's been roster roulette, you know. I mean, they, they had 48 guys in here, 25 and 23, the last two years. They bring guys in, they take a look at them, they don't like them, they cut them, or they don't play well enough. Bring another guy in and take a shot, you know, take a shot at him. So I, I think there needs – I really think that that's an area that would help in a lot of ways. And it's not like, you know, a, a veteran backup point guard or whatever, a backup big man is going to take them from 16 wins to 25 wins. You know, that that's, that's just not feasible or realistic. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting when uh, they are going to get a point guard back. Uh, Roten, I guess, is scheduled to play on Saturday, uh, and Marshall someplace down the road, which is interesting because many people thought Marshall would be back before Roten, uh, but I guess Roten is going to play Saturday, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but when they get Marshall and they have Roten, and, you know, you mix them with Covington and Okafor and Noel and, and maybe the Stauskas can get together, I mean, at least they have guys who seem like NBA players on the floor all the time. Yeah, I would agree with that. Now, Roten says he's good to go. He told me pregame last night in New York, he's good to go. He's a go Saturday now. Brett Brown said Tuesday that it was going to be eight to ten days, so I sort of need to couch that, that, you know, the the Sixers have to approve, and maybe they're just being conservative and, you know, afraid he'll have a setback or whatever, but, yeah, we also thought that Marshall would go first. Roden can play both guard positions, and, you know, he can get his shot. He can be out of control at times, but he's very quick, and and he's left-handed, and he can get to the rim, and, you know, offensively, they're just having so much trouble scoring that you're right. I mean, I don't think these guys are like you know, it's not like you're bringing back uh, Russell Westbrook or somebody like that. But you're right; they are competent NBA players, and this team has a shortage of those. So it certainly should help, and maybe it would help too that they have some experience. Maybe they could help some of these younger guys to kind of navigate through some of these issues, and you know, better understand what the circumstances are and what what to look for, and you know, help them get through it. All right, Tom Moore, everybody. Always good to catch up with him. The Sixers take on uh, the Nuggets on Saturday. You can listen to that game here on 97.3 ESPN, the tip-off at 1 o'clock. Early game here on Saturday afternoon. Thanks, Tom. Anytime, Mike. Take care.